uh, again shot, same girl, Andrea. And um, so here on the left, this is the reconstructed image. And if I zoom in, you can see it's, it's good detail. You can see fine hairs and everything. So this is now already focused. This is the best focus we can do with this. You know, also here, back at the throat. And you can see, well, she wouldn't like me to do that, but uh, here you go. <laughs> OK. Now on the right, this is the 3D model. And if I just uh, stop, stop it from ping-ponging, I can rotate it a bit around, hang a bit closer. And you can see that here it even picks up nicely on the eye, on that shape. And also the mouth comes off pretty nicely. And there's still some noise on that, so it's not perfect, because the depth calculation also depends on the, um, uh, on, on the structure in the image. So you need to have structure in the image because it needs to pick up on some structure to calculate depth. It wouldn't work on a homogeneous surface. That doesn't work. But you can always project a pattern, any kind of pattern, and then again, it works. Now, what I said before, you can now use this additional depth information to do some, some nice uh, image processing uh, on the fly using this depth map uh, in addition to your uh, 2D image. So I just now I reduce the, uh, the depth of field. And let me focus to the tip of the nose. So here on the right, this is uh, the focus plane where the image is focused to now. And here you can see if I zoom in a little bit, you can see the nose is now nicely in focus. And now I can focus back to the eye and here to the front or somewhere in between. And basically what's happening here, this is just a shader using the, uh, the depth information, the depth map, and the uh, texture, and then applies the blurring depending on the distance from the selected uh, plane. Yeah? So it's not actually working on the, on the live, on the raw light field data, but it's just using the output of that. Um, other nice things that you can do is uh, instead of uh, refocusing, you can simply relight the whole image and say, I want to get everything lit that's here up in front, or just the eyes, or the teeth, or the throat. Yeah. So and you could easily also add some directed light and then use the 3D form to cast shadows and so on and so on. So this is really a nice thing for post-processing your images. If you take these 3D images, uh, you, can, you can really adjust afterwards what you want to shoot. Yeah. Um, OK, and you can not only do this with still pictures, but it also works, of course, with the 3D images, uh, with the uh, video. So let me defocus this. And then you can focus here to the front, to the flower, or back to the eye. Now the hand comes in again so to that. And do the same thing also with the relighting. OK. And uh, to show you that it's not all fake and that we didn't calculate hours and hours to give you this presentation, uh, we have also a live demonstration. So Carolyn, we come and sit down. OK. So this is calculating now the depth at, uh, it says down here that the pure depth calculation is around 94 milliseconds at the moment. So you can also get better quality if you calculate longer. So you can select that in the algorithm, what you need. Yeah. So you can see. Uh, uh, you could also record the raw images first, and then afterwards in post-processing do all of this, but it also works live. Uh, this is only a single GTX uh, 580 graphics card. It's actually this box here, the shuttle PC we have here with the Core i7 processor that does all that. So with dual core, et cetera, and more uh, stronger GPUs, you could do even more. You could also go up to 30 frames a second. OK, let me pause this so we can relieve Carolyn. OK, great. And uh, now let me show you some what, what this raw image actually looks like. Um, so this is actually the Bayer pattern raw image. And then we demosaic it, and you end up with this. So here you can see this nicely in the eye, that the reflection of the lamp is seen from slightly different angles in neighboring micro lenses. And if I switch over to the, another view, we can also see at some places like here, you can see the different focal lengths. So you see the, the blue one is in focus, the red one is out of focus. The red one is for elements far away, the blue one is for elements close by, and the green one is for intermediate elements. 
So if we go down here, this should be for elements far away. And now we get a more in focus image. Let's your, your skin is too fair, Karen. That's <laughs> OK, don't have a good example. I have a better example later on. OK. So and from that, you, you then do the refocus. And uh, in this software now, we also do all the rendering directly from the light field data, from this raw image that you just seen before. And nice thing you can do here is also to change the, um, that's kind of changing the point of view. That's, that's all raw inside the data, inside the light field data. And you can also do the other direction. So even without, um, so you can actually pick up and look a little bit behind objects because you can, you can pick different pixels from different micro lenses and then already do a, a kind of moving around without first doing a 3D reconstruction and then moving the whole 3D thing. That's all in the, in the raw image. And you can do also fun things like a kind of a zoom effect. Yeah. Carolyn doesn't like this, but uh, I mean. <laughs> OK. And another great thing is, um, hang on. Where do I got this? Focus. Also here. Yeah. Um, now, this is a kind of a stereo view with, with red green views. It's just to demonstrate what, uh, that you can change also the, the eye separation afterwards. Yeah. So you can get them further apart or closer together, which means you can change the baseline later on, depending on the viewer, depending on the situation. You can also rotate the image and still get, still get a 3D impression. Because we, our, our micro lenses are, oriented, are, hex, are a hexagonal pattern, you can, uh, you can rotate the baseline. Yeah? You can take, uh, it, it doesn't have to be shown to the viewer in the same orientation as the stereo camera set has been shown. Uh, so you can with a, just imagine a stereo camera set and you try to take a portrait shot. You would have to turn it like this, but then every viewer would have to look the, uh, watch the image also like this. Yeah? With our camera, you take the picture, you can also rotate the camera, and you rotate the image back, and you still get 3D. So it's kind of an isotropic 3D camera, you could say. Okay. Go back to this. Um, yeah, and then, of course, you can also do these, these things like... Um, uh, refocusing, as I've shown you before, directly from the light field. Uh, and do all these things. Uh, 